Hey YouTube, this is Ian from Big Rock ADV, and today is a video that many of you have been asking for and waiting for for a long time. So as many of you know, I've owned both the KTM 690 Enduro R and the 500 EXC. I know so many of you are trying to decide which bike is right for you. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a deep dive into the specs and the differences between these two bikes. And we're going to have a discussion about which bike might be right for you depending on how and where you ride. Now please keep in mind that the KTM 690 is basically the same bike as the Husqvarna 701 and the 500 EXC is kind of the same bike as the Husky FE 501S. Now keep in mind, yes, there are minor differences, but for the sake of, of what we're going to talk about in this video, you can apply all the stuff to the Huskies as well. Also keep in mind that the 500 EXC and the 350 EXC are basically the same bike with the exception of the 500 having a larger piston. So if you're comparing to the 350, um, these specs are going to apply to the horsepower and torque are a little bit different though. So if we think of this broadly, the 690 and the 500 are both essentially dual sport bikes. They cost around the same price. They're kind of similar looking in size. The weight's not too different, although we're going to talk about weight and it actually is quite a bit different. So I know why a lot of you are cross shopping these bikes and trying to figure out which one's right for you. You've probably noticed some differences on the surface and some things that you've read online, but what's the real story here? So as someone who's owned both, ridden both, worked on both, I'm gonna tell you my opinion on the differences that matter and which one you should be riding based upon your situation. So let's, without further talk, let's get into this and get started. So if we start to look at the specs between these two bikes, all right, so, the 690 weighs 320 pounds. Now I'm gonna use the dry weights here because they hold different amounts of gas, so I figured it's a little more fair to go ahead and use the dry weights. So the 690 is 320 pounds dry. Now keep in mind, we're looking at the 2019 model for each of these bikes. So I wanted to keep it apples to apples, so I did the 2019 for all the specs. A few other things to keep in mind as well, the 690 was completely redone for 2019. So the things in this video do not apply to the 2018 and earlier, although I'll mention a few ways how the 2018 and earlier were different if that's something you're looking at. So again, the weight of the 690 is 320 pounds dry. That compares to the 500 to 240 pounds. That's 80 pounds difference. That's a big, big difference. You absolutely will feel it. Um, the weight is gonna be kind of an advantage on the street for stability, especially on the freeway and things like that, getting blown around by trucks. Um, but off-road, the weight is not your friend and the 500 is superior in that regard. So the weight is a huge difference and we just can't escape from that. Looking at the suspension travel on the bikes, so the 690 has pretty good travel at 9.8 inches, more than most adventure bikes, uh, but not as much as a, as a dirt bike. They have to do that to keep the bike from getting too tall and just to engineer the whole chassis of the bike. Um, also, less travel means it, it, it does a little bit better on twisty roads because it's not quite, quite so squishy. And the 500 has an average of, if I average a front and rear travel on the 500, it has 12 inches. So that's dirt bike, you know, full on dirt bike levels of suspension travel. I mean, keep in mind that the 500 is essentially a plated dirt bike, whereas the 690 is a dual sport bike. And we're going to talk about kind of what that means in a little bit. Okay, so the wheelbase on these bikes is something to keep in mind. A longer wheelbase is going to steer a little bit slower. It's going to be a little bit more stable. And a shorter wheelbase is going to be a little bit more nimble. So you, as you would expect, the 690 is a little longer, a little bit larger bike. Uh, 59 inches on the 690 and 58.3 on the 500. But that's probably not going to be something that's driving your purchasing choice. Um, the suspension rake, now I've talked about this in my other videos, so the rake is going to affect the quickness of the steering. Uh, the rake is just the angle that the forks uh, meet the ground at. So uh, a, shorter, a sharper rake or a steeper rake, uh, which you have on the 500 at 26 and a half, is going to be a more nimble, um, quicker steering bike. On the 690, you've got a rake of 27.7, so a little bit more stable, a little bit more of a cruiser in that regard. So let's talk about the seat height. So um, because of the longer suspension travel and higher ground clearance on the 500, there's just no getting around the fact that that's going to push your seat way up in the air. So if you're a vertically challenged person, 
this two or so extra inches of seat height, actually it's exactly two inches higher on the 500, is going to be an issue for you versus the 690 um, at 35.8. Those are both high, but the 500 being very, very high. So if you're in a market for one of these, go sit on both of them at the dealer, um, see how you are getting a reach to the ground and see your comfort level with that. Um, the 500 is, of course, 80 pounds lighter, so that's in the favor of the 500, but if you can't even get um, a toe on the ground, then that's maybe a, a kind of a showstopper for you, whereas the 690 is a little bit lower. Now, yes, I know you can lower the seat, you can um, lower the suspension, but keep in mind you're starting two inches higher on the 500 than the 690. So ground clearance, um, we kind of all touched on this talking about the seat height, but being a dirt bike, the 500 has a much um, higher ground clearance. So for going over logs and going through ruts and you know going through extreme terrain, um, 14 inches of ground clearance is really impressive. It's gonna allow you to treat it as a full on race dirt bike. Um, the 690 is a little bit more of an adventure bike level ground clearance, still more than most adventure bikes, but not quite what a dirt bike would be, uh, 10.6, which is going to be good for the average dual sport rider, but for really extreme situations, um, you just can't beat the 14 inches of ground clearance on that 500. I mean, the 500 can clear just about anything a sensible person would want to ride would want to ride over. So let's talk about fuel capacity on these things. So for 2019, again, they redesigned the 690. It bumped up from 3.2 to 3.6 for the 2019 model, um, which is a decent amount. Still not enough really for adventure riding or even some longer dual sport rides, but a decent amount. Um, the 500 is only 2.2 with a stock tank, but now there's something really important we need to talk about with the fuel here. Um, Cause as you're probably seeing from the photos and if you research these bikes, the 690 fuel tank is not in the front of the bike where you would expect. The 690 fuel tank is the subframe of the bike, so it's actually in the subframe. So you can't just put on a bigger unit. So in order to expand your fuel range on the 690, you have to buy an expensive um, aftermarket solution, which is either like a saddle tank in the front uh, that would go where a traditional tank kind of goes on a, on a normal bike, or they make a, there's a company in Europe that makes a, uh, a tank that goes under, under the front of the seat where the airbox um, is on the stock bike. And that's a good solution as well. But, but again, that's quite a bit more expensive um, than just popping on a, on a Cerebi or an IMS tank onto your 500, which you can do for two or $300 and change it out probably in 20 minutes. So that's something to keep in mind. Cheaper to upgrade your fuel capacity on the 500, and you're gonna have more choices um, in terms of different capacities, different types of tanks on the 500 than the 690. So keep that in mind. Um, on horsepower and torque, yeah, the 690 is definitely more powerful. Um, 74 horsepower and 54 pounds of torque. I think that's the most powerful production single cylinder bike in the world. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's pretty imp incredible power from a single. Uh, the 500 is obviously less. It's uh, fi around 55 horsepower and around 40 foot pounds of torque. And those are estimates because I've had a real hard time finding any sort of uh, dyno charts that I trust for the 500. Um, so yeah, about 20 less uh, horsepower, maybe maybe 10 to 15 less on the torque. Off-road, that's not gonna be an issue because there's no way to really put down 74 horsepower off-road anyway with the limitations of traction and tires and things like that. So it's just gonna be wheel spin. Um, but for street riding and canyon carving, yeah, that extra power of the 690 is going to be a hell of a lot of fun. So whether you really care about that extra power is kind of going to depend on how much of a street rider you are, how much time you plan to spend on the street. And unless you're doing drag races at 100 plus miles an hour, it's not going to really matter. Oil capacity we're going to talk about in the next slide because that, we need to talk about that in more detail. Um, these bikes have different electronics, or what I should say is that the 500 has no electronics. And if you're a pure kind of dirt bike guy or you just don't want electronics and, and you don't like traction control and ABS, then you'll love the 500 because you can't get that. On the 690, however, for 2019, they have added uh, traction control and ABS, which has some adjustment factors in it. Um, you know, if you want a really good video on that, uh, I'd recommend going and watching uh, Rocky Mountain's um, first impressions ride of the 690. They did a really great job uh, telling you about all those modes. Um, so if, if that's something that's important to you, having the ABS and the traction control, then the 690 is going to be your machine. Um, and if you don't like that stuff, then you're going to be happier with the 500. All right. So uh, we're going to get into some more of the details of how the bikes are constructed and some different factors uh, that affect which bike is gonna be better for you. So kind of moving away from specs into, into some other things. So the subframe, uh, we've kind of talked about this, but the subframe on the 690 um, is the fuel tank. Um, 
Now you, it does have threaded holes on the top where the grab handles go and you can put racks and things on it from different aftermarket companies. Uh, the 500 has a partial metal subframe and I'll put some photos here of what I'm talking about. But the 500 subframe does not go all the way back um, down that rear fender to the license plate. So you're kind of limited in terms of putting weight on it. And if you're going to use the 500 for extended travel and put racks and bags on, um, just be really careful about uh, what system you go with and making sure that um, whatever you put on is gonna be able to handle the weight that you wanna load it with. But they do make racks for the 500. Um, so Cush Drive, a Cush Drive is, so Cush Drive is rubber dampers inside the rear hub. And what this does is it dampens out the sort of the jarring motions of, of going on and off the throttle. So as you're riding your bike and getting on and off the throttle, the jerkiness is taken out. And what this does is it not only gives you a smoother ride with less vibration, it, al it also allows your sprockets and chain to wear less because you're, you're dampening out that, that jerkiness of it. Um, pretty much all street bikes with chain drive have a cush drive. Dirt bikes don't need a cush drive because riding in the dirt is kind of like an automatic cush drive because that, that sort of absorption is built into the slipperiness of the terrain, if that makes any sense. But on the streets, you kind of want a cush drive um, to dampen out those, those harsh motions in the, in the final drive. Um, so if you're gonna use your 500 for a lot of street riding, um, some people do go ahead and, and change out the rear wheel for one with a cush drive hub. Um, you don't have to do that. But just be, keep in mind on, on something like the 500 to look at, check your splines, your output splines on your transmission for wear over time. Because again, the harshness of that, not having that cush drive if you do a lot of street miles, um, could wear out your splines, but just something to keep, keep an eye on. All right, so let's move on to some stuff that's kind of had a lot of, um, not controversy, but just debate and discussion on the internet forums and another video. So let's talk about some of the maintenance differences between these bikes. And this is gonna be where some of the huge differences come in. But we're gonna talk about why it may not be as extreme as it seems. So if you look in the owner's manual of the 690, it says to change your oil at around 6,000 miles. Um, that also happens to be the valve inspection interval as well. And if you go to your manual on your 500 EXC, and I know because I've owned, again, I've owned two of these things, and I've also owned the 690, they say every 15 hours. So you notice right away, they're taking different approaches to this. Hours is more focused on people who ride their bikes off road, because you're not really looking at miles, you're looking at how many hours the bike was running. Um, for instance, at a really slow speed, you're not racking up that many miles, but you're still putting a lot of hours on the engine, so that's why that's more important. Um, the 690, they're looking at miles because what they're assuming is you're gonna be using it more on the street or maybe on fire roads where you're racking up those miles. Um, I have a lot to talk about with this. So um, a few things. Um, what I'm trying to do to give you a, a number to compare to is, what I did was I converted the 15 hours to miles based on an average speed of 25 miles an hour. Now keep in mind that's an average speed while the engine is running, so that includes idling and stopping and trail obstacles and things like that. Now if you average 30 miles an hour or 40 miles an hour, that's gonna be more miles, but you get the, you get the idea. I'm just giving you some conversion factor there. So there's a few things that are very important to talk about here with this oil situation and this maintenance situation. The first thing is that you might think that, oh, well, the 690 must hold a lot more oil and that's why it's a longer interval. Well, that actually isn't really true. It's kind of surprising. I was shocked when I got my 690 and did my first oil change that it only held like one, around 1.7 liters of oil as compared to a 500, which holds around 1.3, 1.4, depending on what year 500 you're talking about. It's getting cold out here. Sorry, I had to go put another jacket. So getting back into this oil and maintenance discussion. So the capacity, like I was saying, is pretty much is really close on these bikes. So it's not really a matter of capacity. So then what's going on here? Um, why are they telling you to change the oil you know, 20 times more often, literally, you know, 15 to 20 times more often on the 500. That's crazy. Well, there's a few things happening. Um, first of all, KTM is assuming that you are using the 500 in a, in a race fashion, off-road, in dirt, mud, sand, and just beating the ever-living crap out of it. Whereas on the 690, they're assuming you're probably cruising down a country lane going to church or something. Um, so they're, they're assuming a different kind of use. So that, that's part of it. So you're gonna to have to factor in how you use the bike in, in comparing this. So what I'm saying is that if you're not racing your 500 at full speed, 100 miles an hour across the desert and bashing it over rocks and driving through sand dunes, then you probably don't need to change it every 15 hours or 400 miles. Um, also, conversely on the 690, 
if you are riding the crap out of it and beating it to hell off road and, and not driving to church on Sunday on the street, then you're going to want to change it a hell of a lot more often than 6,000 miles. Now, personally for me, I won't even go 6,000 miles on my BMW on my GS. So 6,000 seems extreme to me. I don't know why KTM kind of takes these extreme positions like this. So realistically on a 690 with that small of a capacity, I probably wouldn't go more than 1,500 or 2,000 miles between oil changes. And on the other hand, realistically, the way I use a 500 for dual sport use, um, I probably would, I would stretch that interval to maybe 800 to 1,000 miles, um, you know, maybe more like 600 miles, uh, depending on what kind of trails I was riding. So if I was riding a lot of really slow speed stuff, I'm gonna, the bike has an hour meter on it, on the dash. So I'm gonna look at the hours as well as the miles and I'm gonna kind of gauge it, but 20 to 25 hours or 500 to 1,000 miles, depending on how fast you're going is what I'm gonna do on the 500. Now, another thing, it's not just the intended use. There are differences in the engine. The 690s are more of a street um, developed engine where the 500 is an off-road racing engine. So the tolerances are different, the compression's different, um, the RPM is different. So, so the 500 has more engine wear, that is true. I and mean, that's gonna be a factor in this oil change interval, but your use is probably the biggest uh, factor here. So, so keep that in mind that you can't just go by what this says on the surface. You're going to have to dig deeper and figure out for yourself. Um, but this is going to impact you a lot if you're doing a lot of long extended trips uh, with the bike. You're not going to want to be changing oil so often. But again, like I said, if you're doing more street riding, you don't need to change it every 400 miles. And conversely, on the 690, you can't really go 6,000 miles, at least not in my opinion. Now, basically everything I've said about the oil change kind of also carries over to the valve interval. So you should check your valves. Um, it's not something you want to neglect, but, but the same thing applies. Depending on how hard you're using the bike and what kind of conditions you're riding in, you're not going to have to check the valves every 30 hours or 800 miles or whatever it is on your 500. Um, you're probably not going to have to do that. A, a lot of people go... 100 or 200 hours before they do their first valve check. Now, I'm not recommending that. I believe in checking valves more often, but when I've had my 500s and when I have my current one now, I'm definitely not gonna be doing every 30 hours because I know from experience with the titanium valves on these bikes that you can go way more than that between valve inspections. Um, checking the valves is fairly easy. Adjusting them is a little bit more work because you gotta take out shims, but something that uh, you don't wanna neglect. Now on the 690, um, I do believe that you probably could go 6,000 miles on, on valve checks on the 690 motor. Um, it is more a street developed engine and they, they can build in a lot um, more of a durability to the valve train. So you can probably, you know, take that 6,000 mile interval. On the 500, um, you would never wanna really stretch it out that far. So I'm putting up a slide here because I just want to illustrate um, the huge difference in the KTM recommendation on these bikes in terms of the maintenance. So if you were to follow the schedule I talked about, um, you'd be changing uh, the 690 oil uh, twice in 10,000 miles or around twice and 28 times on the 500. <laughs> so that's a huge difference. Now, again, you don't have to do it every 15 hours if you're using the bike more gently and maybe that's only going to mean that you're changing it 10 or 15 times in that 10,000 miles um, and maybe also you're going to be changing the 690 uh, more like every 2,000 miles so you might change it five times. So the actual difference might be a factor of two or three and not this factor of, of 10 to 15 times greater that you see uh, just on paper. So again, you've got to read between the lines here. Um, same things on the valve checks. If you go by the, the service schedule on the manual 14 times and 10,000 miles on a 500 versus only twice uh, or actually maybe even only once sort of on the on the 690 if, if you go by the 6,000. So which bike is right for you? Should you get a 690 or should you get a 500? So I think I said this earlier in the video but the 690 is developed as a dual sport bike right based off a street engine. The 500 is a plated dirt bike. Now let's go through some things and talk about which, what that means and which one's right for you. So um, is it going to be your only bike? So if you have another companion bike in the garage, if you have an adventure bike or a street bike or whatever it might be, um, and you're buying, you're looking at this bike as being your off-road focused bike, then I would get a 500 because you have the other bike for street use or more longer adventure rides. 
Now, if this is gonna be your only motorcycle, which probably means you're gonna be putting miles on the street and you're gonna care about the maintenance interval and you're gonna want those extra th things that make it better on the road, then you should probably get a 690. Um, so again, if it's your only bike, a 690 is gonna probably make more sense unless you're just total dirt bike rider, then you don't care about the 690 anyway. Um, and if you have other bikes in the garage you can use for long rides, then uh, get the 500 because the 500 is so much better off-road that you're gonna enjoy having that. Are you gonna take long trips on the highway? Um, if so, because of the mileage and the maintenance um, and things like that, you don't wanna be racking up a ton of miles on your 500 because it affects the resale and you're gonna to have to do all that maintenance and things like that, um, then that's not the greatest. Um, so again, longer trips on the highway leans towards the 690. Um, if you're not doing that, then the 500 is better. Um, do you trailer your bike to the trails? Well. If yes, then just get a 500 because if you're the kind of dirt bike rider who, who puts a bike in a truck or trailers it, not there's anything wrong with that, I do that too, um, then the 500 is perfect for you because you're not racking up those freeway miles. Um, you could even do something like a BDR on a 500. I would just trailer it to some place um, you know, to get yourself started instead of doing thousands of miles on a freeway, which would really suck on a 500. Not to mention the maintenance and the wear and tear you're putting on the thing. Uh, if you don't like to trail your bike and you prefer to always just ride from your garage and you want to be able to ride 500 or 1,000 miles to the start of the trail, then that is definitely leaning towards the 690. Not that you can't do it on a 500, but the 690 is a better choice for that. Are you going to ride single track? So you have to ask yourself, how much of a dirt biker are you? How hardcore are you? Do you want to go hit the double you know, diamond trails and do you really consider yourself like that expert off-road rider and want to be doing that? And you know, also what kind of bikes do your buddies ride? Are they riding dirt bikes and going on single tracks? If yes, then the 500 is far, far better because that extra 80 pounds and the longer wheelbase and you know, um, just the design of the 690 is not as well suited for that. Can you drag a 690 through single track? Yes, you can, but it's not really the tool that was developed specifically to do that, and the 500 is. Actually, that's not entirely true, is it? Because if you're really a dedicated off-road guy um, and you don't need the license plate, you're probably gonna have like a 300 TPI or whatever two-stroke bike. But for me, I don't do two-strokes um, and I need a license plate on all my bikes, so I have a 500. Do you like electronics? We talked about that before. If yes, then get the 690. If no, then get the 500. Um, do you like to do maintenance? Or in other words, does maintenance bug you? If maintenance bugs you a lot, then the 690 is better because you'll do less of it. Um, if you don't really mind changing oil every you know, few rides and doing that kind of thing, then um, the 500 will be fine. Um, do you put on a lot of miles? So, you know, that goes to the maintenance and the wear and tear. Um, if you plan to put on more than a couple thousand miles a year, I'd probably stick with the 690 because, you know, a 500 with 10 or 15,000 miles is, is kind of considered uh, needing an engine rebuild and it's going to have quite a bit less resale value. Whereas a 690 with 10 or 15,000 miles is, is still okay. You know, you're not going to really worry about that. Um, do you plan to ever supermoto the bike? So if yes, then you know, that's gonna be a street usage and that 690 is gonna be a lot better with the cush drive, the electronics, um, longer wheelbase, everything like that's gonna be better for the street. Um, if you're not gonna be doing a supermoto and you, and you don't care about that, then the 500 is, is better. So at the end of the day, you know, the 690 is developed by KTM and the 701 by Husky as a sort of do it all, trying to be a unicorn, although unicorns don't exist as I've talked about in my other videos kind of bike, um, it does a good job of that. They, 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 they find a pretty good balance between uh, having some street capability and having that longer maintenance interval and still being off-road capable, still a really good quality WP Explore suspension, um, good chassis, good brakes, a great bike uh, for dual sporting, uh, but you can't get around the extra 80 pounds. The other thing I kind of forgot to mention in this video is the 690 is a trellis frame, and that, that only gives you a certain amount of steering lock um, on your bike, so your turning, your turning um, radius is a little bit not as good on the 690 because that trellis frame interferes with the steering, whereas the 500 doesn't have that issue. So the 500 DXC is really a dirt bike with a license plate and um, it really has no compromises for going off-road. But on the other end, they haven't really done anything to try to make it better on the street. It doesn't have a cush drive, it doesn't have long maintenance intervals, it doesn't have a comfortable seat, it doesn't have any way to put a windshield, um, it doesn't really have good solutions for luggage, although you can adapt all those things. And to be honest, it's not that much harder to set up a 500 for traveling than it is a 690, and there's a lot of people who do it. 
at the end of the day, this is going to come down to a lot of your preferences, which we've talked about in this video, and, and how you ride. If you're riding a lot on a street to get to the trails and pure off-road performance is not as important to you, maybe you're coming to this for more of a street or adventure background, then you're probably going to be more at home with the 690. And the extra 80 pounds is probably not going to be too much of a big problem for you. And actually, it's better on the freeway. But if you're an off-road focused rider and you care about taking the bike on single track, and off jumps and blazing through the desert as fast as you can and being as nimble as possible on, this, on the trail, then the 500 really is the best dual sport bike in the world for that. It, it just really is. I mean, you can read the magazines if, if you don't believe me. Um, so for pure off-road use, the 500 is it's just so, much, so far superior to the 690. So if you want my honest, honest opinion about this after I've owned both, for the way I ride um, and for my preferences, uh, my money at the end of the day goes to the 500. And here's why, but this is only for me. So for me, I have an adventure bike in the garage. I've got a GS, but in the past I've had Africa Twins and other bikes like that. So I'm gonna use my adventure bike for longer trips with a lot of pavement. And what that means is that when I wanna go off-roading, I really wanna go off-roading and I don't wanna be held back by a heavy bike. So the 500 is the right choice for me um, since I have the other bike in the garage. I kind of find that the 690 almost gets stuck in between in the middle a little bit too much. Uh, what I mean is that it's not really um, light enough to be an excellent dirt bike, although it's a good off-road bike. Um, and it's also not really comfortable enough on the street in terms of power, wind protection, luggage capabilities, things like that, to really be a great touring bike. So I kind of found the 690 was a little bit stuck between two worlds for me. And as much as I love and appreciate that bike, the power it has, the capability it has, the versatility it has, it's a little bit too much of a jack of all trades and master of none. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Um, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos. Um, until then, good luck with your decision, ride safe, and we'll see you next time.